Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Frostpunk Let's Play. Look at this. Generator burning. Good stuff going. So we're back. It's now Monday when I'm recording this. And we've just gone the path of order. And uh, we now have to deal with the Londoners. Uh, so we've uh, chose... Now we, Now our book of, of, of laws, we have access to both adaptation and purpose and so let's take a look at the things that we've got so obviously we have the neighborhood watch um, so we've signed that we now need to build we can now build these watchtowers and the watchtowers increase hope um, of people living around it so we've built a watchtower here though it looks like it actually needs workers this is going to be really annoying uh, thankfully our watchtower is currently covering all these buildings so whenever you select a building that has a, an area of effect uh, any buildings that it's currently affecting are going to highlight in white, so the game makes it really easy. Oop. There is uh, apparently no road to this little house right here. Um, the game makes it really easy to tell what buildings are being affected by uh, by things. Now, when it comes to these sort of circular radius, these sort of circular areas effect, it can be a little uh, hard to tell whether a building is going to be affected by it or not. Uh, I think a certain number of the tiles that it's on because remember, every building is on a certain number of small individual tiles. So houses sit on eight tiles. So you see four in two rings, um, inner and outer. And a certain number of those need to be on uh, in the area of effect for it to actually work. You can see that uh, right here, this bunkhouse would be in range of the neighborhood watch, but it won't be uh, right here. Uh, in this uh, estimation, it looks like about three of the four are being touched by the area over in over here only two of them are so take a little bit of, of figu fiddling to figure out uh, what's going on okay so uh, Londoners oh, what we got going on here I've got my one automaton he's currently working on steel I gotta reacquaint myself with the situation we're in we're gaining 800 cold per day because we're currently only getting coal from the outpost our food rations are just slightly under what we need, so uh, we do net zero untreated citizens, which is nice. We have eight homeless, but that'll be fixed as soon as this road gets built, because I didn't realize that one of those houses wasn't getting anything. And we now need to do a research. Okay, so let's take a look at the forecast for the future. Temperature is not going to change in the next four days, so that's great. I mean, well, three days. It means we don't have to worry about the temperature at all. Um, Houses are all livable, which is great. That's what you want to see. As long as your houses are livable, you're in a good position. Uh, workplaces uh, can afford to be chilly. You don't want houses to be chilly because that uh, makes people unhappy. So we can't use the extended shift for three days, and we don't want to fail this because it'll uh, raise discontent and lower hope, and we now need to build up our hope. So the way that we stop the Londoners from um, taking all of our people with them is to raise the hope. So currently people are going to join the Londoners a lot. So basically every, I don't know how many hours, but every so often um, the Londoners are going to have basically a, 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 either their population is going to go up or their population is going to go down based on the number of arrows that are pointing up or pointing down. Uh, and as you raise hope, the number of people that are going to join the Londoners is going to go down. And the number of people that are going to leave the Londoners is going to end up going up. So right now, we've got everybody um, is going to join the Londoners. So basically, if we don't do anything and we leave our hope exactly where it is, everyone is going to end up joining the Londoners. Let's go ahead. and Can I afford mechanical calculators? I can't. I need more steel. Um, we have the steam steel works, which is great. We should probably get the steam sawmill. But I really think we need, we don't have any steam cores to build a, uh, a wall drill anyway. So let's go ahead and get the sawmill upgrade. We do need to build the wall drill. It's the only source of basically infinite wood. And there's not enough trees in this area. For oop, oop, We've got uh, two more amputees. So we do need to build two more prostheses. Those will get uh, built pretty soon. Radical treatment is causing people to still become amputees. Now we will uh, staff the neighborhood watch. And you can see that this went up. Uh, we have a lot of people living near our neighborhood watch, but we still need uh, sort of, uh, we need to build another one. That's what the game tells us to do. Um, so the question is, where are we gonna put it? Uh, I do wanna put another housing district over here. Uh, I like to make housing districts around steam hubs. Uh, I think it, it's the best way to do it. 
We don't want to overlap this with the other neighborhood watchtower because they're not going to overlap and it's just going to waste the space. But I actually think we can very easily fit a, uh, a housing district right in here. So if I go ahead, and that's a perfect um, sort of spot to put it in, uh, we can go ahead and let's put it just over this way a little bit. And actually, here's what we'll do. We'll pause the game, we'll go into people, and we'll drop down some tents. Now, I don't like this road being here. It's going to stop us from placing these houses perfectly. So we'll get rid of that road. And then we're just going to place down some tents so that we know... Ah, it fits perfectly, the tents do. So now we'll grab our watchtower and figure out where in here we want to place it. So I can place it right there. So we're going to delete this. We are going to put our watchtower there. And then we're actually just going to pause the construction on this stuff. So the way that the construction system works is that as soon as you place down the spot, uh, so as soon as I placed down the blueprint for the, for the building, it um, took the resources. However, if you pause the construction, you can see this little symbol goes up. They're not going to build it. And if you tell them to stop building it, if you push that X button, they're, you're going to get all those resources back. So when you dismantle a structure, you don't get all the resources back. But, ooh, our food is actually full. We're actually completely full up on food right now. Which surprises me because it says that our food supply should be actually going down. But only by two, so that's why. Um, we're going to go ahead and I can't build a resource depot because I don't have enough steel. Steel is definitely something that we always need more of. This is a steam steel works. That is not, so let's go ahead and upgrade. Well, we can't because we don't have enough steel. We're going to get to 15 steel, and now we are going to upgrade this to a steam steel works. Because we need more steel. Like I said in a previous video, um, wood is sort of your... Oh, we got people coming. Oh, that's the coal. Wood is sort of your uh, limiting factor in the early game. Um, steel quickly becomes your limiting factor later on. Did hope just change? No. People are still upset because an adult died. I think that's just because the snow pit does not provide uh, hope mitigation for that. Where's our sawmill? It's starting to run out. So we got to place down another sawmill. Oh, we got one over here. Okay, that's cool. Let's go to our scout. He's going to find steam cores at the snow cliff. Excellent. Only one, though, unfortunately. The man we've seen from afar was nowhere to be found. Searching his burrow, we found a diary of a scientist who fled winter home. After the starving city fell into chaos, its leader and army captain appointed himself an absolute ruler. He tried to impose order using force. Plenty of people disgruntled, deserted the city, and most of the others rebelled against him. So this guy went the same path that we did in this video, uh, in this series. He tried to use, he went the path of order, basically. Um, but uh, not successfully. He um, went overboard. I suppose he went overboard and uh, and people um, rebelled and because people weren't working they ran out of food and people started starving and it was just a really bad situation for everybody so that's what we want to avoid now if we check the book of laws and we go into purpose we can see we have the neighborhood watch later we can get the morning gathering we'll gather each morning to make sure our goals and priorities for the day are clear to everyone this is fine this increases hope it's not going to be controversial it's not going to be a problem over here we've got something called foreman um, I'm not really sure what that does. It might allow us to build some sort of a, a, a building near the, 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 the workers. It's probably going to boost productivity in our workshops. Over here we have patrol. We can get these guard stations. Um, an organized militia will maintain peace and order and help us deal with anyone who might threaten it. Guard station raises the hope of people living nearby. So once again, we got to put this near houses. Lowers the discontent of people living nearby. You can use guards to break up protests, although if we do that, discontent's going to rise. We might want to just let people protest. I'll have to build two of them, and discontent will rise. But do these guard stations, here's the question, do these go on roads, or do these get built in the... Uh, okay, these do not go on roads. They have a heating level, so it's probably going to be another building that takes up space. So I'm, I'm noticing already the path of order, its, its structures seem to take up more space uh, than, than others. Um, we're going to put people in this. It's not going to boost our hope because nobody is actually living in the range of this uh, of this tower. But There's no point overlapping uh, the ranges. The only thing that we can do uh, to sort of fix that 
Would, oh, it did actually raise the hope. I'm surprised. Nobody was actually living near it. Wait a second. This is at 99%. Are you kidding? Is the workday over? Darn it, the workday ended at 99%? Oh, that's so... That is so bull. Okay, let's try and get some building done, but oh, we don't have any steel. Steel is definitely a problem right now. Like I said, it's definitely our limiting factor. That's why we're, we're having our automaton work it. Um, because we're good on the coal at the moment. The, the temperature is not going to drop. And, um, and so we can get by on the coal just from our outpost. But our steel is definitely a problem. So while I'd like to start upgrading these into bunkhouses, or basically building bunkhouses over here, um, we're not, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that because um, we need that steel for other things, mainly research. Let's figure out what we're going to research next once this is done. Um, probably the steam sawmill. Now, the charcoal kiln, uh, since the last time I, 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 I recorded, I have actually experimented with this. The charcoal kiln is actually really good. Once you get the uh, two upgrades, it actually produces quite a lot of coal and only uses five workers. So uh, if you go heavy into wood, uh, into the wall drill, and you get a lot of wood production, you can definitely use the charcoal kiln uh, as your primary or even only source of coal. Um, I just really like the coal mine. I think that the coal mine, and the thing about the charcoal kiln is that you don't require any steam cores. Now, you do need to produce a lot of wood, and the only way to do that, other than just cutting down these trees, which run out, is with a wall drill, and wall drills require steam cores. So, either way, you really, unless you just use the coal thumpers, which is going to take most of your workforce uh, to generate enough coal for that. Okay, we've got some survivors. Near the freshwater springs, we met refugees from Winter Home. They're a sorry sight and seem to be completely unmoved by the fate of their city. Asked what kept them from starving, they look away, then mumble something about eating lichens. I don't know about you, but I do not believe them. I always escort survivors to the city because I want them all to survive. Um, I feel like it's it's very important that all the survive uh, that all that they all survive, um, because people, uh, other than time itself are your most valuable uh, resource in this game. Let's check on the food consumption. Food consumption is fine. It has gone down. We didn't need to build that extra resource depot. Uh, we are going to need to um, acquire more hunter's huts, or we need to upgrade them. And uh, we're going to need a lot of food later. I can already tell that. So we've got our two prosthetics. Um, we shouldn't have any more... Okay, the Londoners gained a lot of followers. Yep. So the Londoners are up to 24. We obviously, like, if the Londoners hit, like, 223 when this game, when this timer ran out, it would mean that the Londoners were literally taking everybody. So I noticed we have 24 days. Um, I mean, we have uh, 14 days to do this. So you get 15 days to stop the Londoners. Yeah. So in 15 days, the Londoners will leave. Uh, whatever this number is will be subtracted from your total people. Now, as long as it's less then your po total population you can you're definitely you can keep going i mean you know it's not going to be a, 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 a you know you're not going to it's not going to end your game but, but having that fewer people is going to be an issue um so that's really why you want to stop the londoners um i'm surprised that there's no actual like more than half people live near a watchtower um i'm surprised there's no act active effect See, I, the only, this is the first time I've played Order. Other than that, I've only gone... There we go, they finished it. Sawmill upgrade, sawmill efficiency rises. So these things are going to actually... They're going to they're gonna mine out more quickly now, but uh, we'll be able to put down more of them and, and, and really get to work. Um, ooh, it's cold here, so uh, we need to make that chilly. And we need to make that chilly because we do not want people working in cold because cold will make them sick. Okay, so we need to upgrade some stuff. We have a steam core coming, so I could research the wall drill and um, be safe to do that. Uh, we got the steam steel works. We can't get the advanced steel works for quite a while, but we will eventually get it. Uh, there's really nothing here that I want except for the flying hunters would be nice, but it costs 40 steel per building. And uh, I think at the moment our steel supply probably isn't high enough. What I really want to do is get mechanical calculators so I can start researching automaton upgrades. I cannot stress enough how good automatons are. In my experience playing this game, automatons are the best, which is why I think in this particular playthrough I've sort of gimped myself a bit because I've been crunching the numbers on things like steam cores 
and the amount of resources that you can get per Steam Core, um, and whether that uh, you know equates to what you can get otherwise. So, for example, this coal mine over here, uh, it gives me 800 coal per day. But if I had dismantled the coal mine, which I can no longer do, I've lost the ability to do that forever. Um, I would have gotten four steam cores, and uh, if you just m use four steam cores to build two um, second level uh, coal mines, you get way more coal than 800. So it was probably would have been better for me to dismantle it. Okay, so now that we have mechanical calculators, we've got access to the uh, generator upgrade two and range upgrade two. We won't be needing these yet, um, but we will need the power upgrade if the techn if the heat temperature is going to go down uh, again. A child climbed the generator, slipped and fell. Why was the child climbing the generator? But was thankfully caught by a neighborhood watch member who was on patrol. He then escorted the child to his mother and gave them both a good talking to. It could have ended with a broken leg or worse if it weren't for our watchmen. We're lucky to have them. I'm glad it ended well. Will that boost my hope? No, it doesn't. It's just a little thing, a little blurb they give you. Okay, so that's really irresponsible on the part of that parent. They should have definitely been watching their child to make sure they weren't climbing on the flipping generator. Um, where is our child shelter? Here it is. Children not in child shelters 12. So we need to build another one. Uh, one more child shelter will get every child in a child shelter. Uh, it fits here perfectly, but is it going to get in the way of my housing district? Um, it doesn't have to be... This, the build, this building does not have to be in range of anything else. I'm actually going to place it right here because this is in range of the generator, and that's a good location for it anyway. We don't want to get stuff in the way of our housing because we want to make that as efficient as possible. So the next thing we're going to get is we could get streamlined prosthetics to make these prosthetics cost less. Costing five less steel is really nice. They only cost 10. This will cut it in half. So because it costs 25 steel, we basically have to make five prosthesis for this to be worth it because we'll have saved the, co the steel cost once we made our fifth prosthesis, uh, which is definitely a thing that's probably going to happen. We need to get houses eventually. Uh, but right now what I want to do, well, let's see, how many engineers do we have? Because if we don't have a lot of engineers, then I will probably want to get the mechanized thing so we don't have to have them there. we got plenty of engineers. There is no point in getting mechanized infirmary when we have that many engineers because it, it, only it only requires 10 engineers anyway. Um, I do want the steam coal mine, but we're not currently even running the coal mine, and that'll cost an extra steam core. So what I want to get is streamlined automatons. It'll make them uh, cheaper by 20 wood and 20 steel. Since it only costs 25 steel and 40 wood, you technically have to make two automatons for this to pay for itself, but it honestly pays for itself the very first one you make because it's basically the steel cost. Like I said, it, it, okay, our promise has been fulfilled. Our hope has risen. It didn't uh, raise it enough to make the Londoners go down. I feel like order is going to be more difficult than faith to get that hope raised because faith has seems to me to have more tools at your disposal. It definitely feels to me at the moment that it's easier uh, to raise the hope using um, using faith than than using order. But, you know, I could be wrong. Um, but that's the, the thing that I'm getting. So I'm going to put another sawmill down. I'm going to put it right there. I want wood and I want lots of it. Um, we're not going to put that road there though. We're going to stretch it over here. Obviously, this, this sawmill is not going to stay there forever once the... Um, ooh, hope this went up again. Okay, so the reason that hope went up is because the temporary modifier for the dead person has expired. So hope rose, and now the Londoner's tendency to increase is only one arrow, which is good. We're getting closer to our goal of making that go away completely. Of course, our ultimate goal is to... Um, Okay, so these were the guys that we sent down to Winterholm before the first guys got there because we wanted to explore uh, some areas. Once the, This guy is going to explore this area now. Once this guy gets back to base, we'll send him to the American camp and we'll start exploring that side of the map. We're going to send this guy to the Frozen Grove, and then we're going to send him to the Shrouded Cave, and then he's going to come back because I think that's all that's down there. But if we find more down there, because I don't remember what's down there, then we'll, uh, we'll do that instead. So it's free time now. They can still build stuff, though. And we will go ahead and put 10 people in that sawmill, and we will gain lots of wood once the uh, timer starts again. Once the work time starts. Now that this has expired, we could go ahead and do uh, an extended shift again. But what I really want to do, since we have 33 engineers, is build more workshops. Workshops are the most important building in the game, in my opinion. I'm going to put it right there. 
it's already got a road connection and that's because um, technology is the way that you survive without technology you die and so the faster you can get the tech the better everything gets especially if you're relying heavily on automatons because you can get all of their upgrades way more quickly and automatons get so so good once their uh, their upgrades start to kick in check our economy let's see what our food is food is still fine untreated citizens is zero so that's good um, we might run into we're gonna run into issues with with health later um, later on I'm sure because we only have the one infirmary and infirmaries require steam cores and we're not gonna have enough steam cores to just keep building infirmaries all over the place So let's go to purpose we need to sign laws that will increase hope the morning gathering will slightly increase hope I guess it, in it just increases hope every day um, the guard stations will raise hope and lower discontent although it is a, uh, a controversial law uh, so discontent will rise a little bit, but we don't have a problem with that But I really want to know what foreman does so we're gonna go ahead and get the morning gathering all of these things are good It raises uh, hope permanently, which is nice uh, I think it's a waste of time, but if it helps morale, I mean how long is the gathering gonna be and so begins the transformation of our city into a garrison Oh, come on. How could you honestly? It's just a morning gathering. I Mean I, I suppose I can see the point that he's making that person is arguing that this is the sort of thing the military does but is that really such a bad thing in this situation I really don't think so um, okay so I'm not really sure what happened to those amputees because I built two prosthetics and yet I still have two prosthetics like they didn't get used there's only one body in here we don't know who it is if we if we had a cemetery it would actually tell us the name of that person but uh, because we've decided to I'm gonna build this uh, second outpost depot Oh, wait a second. It's going to take 45 steel. No, we're not going to do that yet. That's going to be a bit before we actually get to that point. What I am going to do, however, is I'm going to allow them to um, to construct these houses because there's actually very little reason not to. No one's going to move into them because there's no steam hub there to, uh, to warm them. So they're going to keep living in the warm houses. Yeah, see, look, we've got eight people, nine people in treatment for, for illness. Let's check our temperature and make sure no one's working in a, a cold environment. And that needs to be heated. I don't think it's work time though. We don't need to heat that when it's not work time. No one that's not gonna get turned on until somebody's actually goes there. That's the way that these work. Thankfully the heaters automatically turn off when there's nobody working them. Okay, so now we've got stuff. Three steam cores. We've got a bunch more people. Uh, 29 homeless. Once these houses are built, we won't have that problem anymore. But because they're gonna start running that, we will need to build a, a steam hub. And I'm going to place this steam hub probably more over here instead of over here. I'm gonna, I just want it to sort of overlap right about there. So I want to put it right behind the neighborhood watch. So we're going to build a road right over there so that I can sort of place the steam hub right here. Pos probably even right... Well, no, that house is not covered by a steam hub if we put it here. So... Um, Oh, but then that house isn't covered if we put it there. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to overlap your steam hubs because it wastes um, efficiency on, on the amount of space that you can heat. But we are going to put it right there. I'm going to tell them not to build that house. And so we'll, we'll get going. Oh, no, he's waiting. We don't want to waste his time. I want him to go to the American camp immediately. We want to get over there. We want to get those resources. Now that we have steam cores, the Londoners gained more followers up to 28. It's going to take 13 days for them to leave. We really need to flip that around and um, and get this uh, get their their um, population decreasing. Because if we let their population keep rising, we're going to have a problem. I don't want anyone to leave because um, I want the people to work. Gonna build a resource depot over there so that we can store more coal. That house is built. That house is built. The steam hub is active. Let's check our coal to make sure that we're actually still up. We're we're slightly we don't quite have enough coal production at the moment. But since we've gotten more people, I'm going to have the automaton stop working that. We're gonna work it with people. And the automaton is gonna work the coal mine, which means we don't have to heat the coal mine. That is 
chili that is chili which is fine this will store coal and now our coal gain is a thousand and forty per day we are going to now explore this buried shame poking around the trees marked with crosses we found shallow graves under each of them the dead bodies lack most of the bigger muscles and some bones bear signs of a cutting tool the corpses have been obviously stripped of edible parts now we know what kept the survivors by the freshwater springs from starving we'll leave the graves intact but we can cut the trees for wood so the people at that the people that were living at the um the frozen whatever which is now not even on the map anymore they were eating their dead that's what happened uh, to the people at Winter Home. They started eating their dead. And that's when you know that hope is lost. There used to be, I think, I don't think it's in the game anymore, but there used to be a thing that, uh, an option in, um, now that we're using, by the way, now that we're using the coal mine, we need to get this. There used to be an option in the laws and under food, I think, or something that allowed you to actually uh, basically sneak human meat into the food supply. Uh, I forget what the option was actually called. But um, it said something ominous, like, uh, you know, that I hope people don't find out. Okay, the temperature is going to drop significantly by two levels on the twenty on day 21, which is going to be really bad. So by day 21, we need to upgrade the, um, we need to gain access to the next generator uh, power upgrade. Basically, where we're going to go with that. And we need to actually start heating probably these workshops because the heater is not going to be enough. We either need to upgrade the heater or to get the Mark II heater, uh, or we need to put steam hubs around them because steam hubs are better anyway. Okay, so how many. We still have 23 unemployed engineers, so let's go ahead and get uh, more tech buildings. I'd like to get more infirmaries, but they need steam cores, so. The only way that we can really increase that is by building more medical uh, posts. So we might actually want to do that. Will it fit there? It will not fit there. Will it fit here? It will fit there. Will it be in range of that steam hub? No, it will not. Even though it kind of looks like it should. Is this going to get heated by the generator? I think only about half of it is in range. These one, these workshops are, are warm, so um, if I put a medical post here, it should actually be heated by the generator. Um, because we don't I don't want to use steam cores on those. We're not going to do that. What we can do, however, because we now have streamlined automatons, so it costs less, we're going to produce another automaton. They're expensive, but they are worth every penny. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and the coal mine's going to be better now. It upgrades it by 10%, which is, which is cool. That will actually help to make up for the automaton. So right now the efficiency is 110%. I'm surprised it's actually that high. Oh wait, we're running it with workers? No, 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 I wanted the automaton to run it. What happened? I thought I put the automaton on that. Oh well. That's probably why people are getting sick because it wasn't being heated. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, we can upgrade that to a steam coal mine. But what we really need to do is get the wall drill. If we, uh, if we don't have the wall drill, we will run out of wood. We will store up food rations in that one so that we can keep gaining food. Let's uh, fast forward this thing. And we have a new law now. So we go to purpose. You have to focus on hope. The foreman. Appointing responsible foreman will make sure that people work as efficiently as possible. Increases the efficiency of a workplace by 40% for 24 hours. That's an awesome ability and there's no downside. Cooldown is two days, so it looks like what we can do is we can. I, I'm assuming what we can do is we can use this on one workplace every two days to raise its efficiency by 40%. That's a really cool ability, but it doesn't affect our hope. So that's something that we're going to want, but not right now. We basically we need the guard stations. There's no other way that we can uh, raise hope and fight off the Londoners but to establish guard stations. So it does raise discontent because it is controversial. If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. So we're starting to get into dangerous territory. We need law enforcement. Every city in the world had it. Yes, that's that's true. So this is our law enforcement. We don't want to get too crazy with it. I don't really like... Oh, this does... No, it's a building. It's a very small building. Again, it's the same... Oh, wait a second. You can build it right over top of the Neighborhood Watch. Wait, is it just an upgraded version of the Neighborhood Watch? They bring peace and order to homes. The presence of guard towers lowers discontent, restores hope. People living near watchtowers. So our guard stations, yeah, they're upgraded neighborhood watch. 
we can we can stick them right over top. So we're gonna do that now. Until it's built, Hope's gonna go down because we don't have the second guard station, the second watchtower. But yeah, they're they're uh, they're upgraded watchtowers. Oh, cool. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to stick yet another building in my uh, in my city. We're gonna explore the American camp. It was well supplied with everything except food. That seems stupid. Searching the tents, we found more victims of hunger. Most of them have badly worn but sophisticated artificial limbs bearing a company symbol, Tesla Manufacturing. We can only bury them and take their equipment. That's right, Nikola Tesla is here. Elon Musk. No, it's actually Nikola Tesla, apparently. So we're going to send these guys to the temporary settlement. Nikola Tesla, dudes. Nikola freaking Tesla is in the game. I want to meet Nikola Tesla. I don't. I actually don't know. If I can meet Nikola Tesla, that's not something that I actually have uh, have seen. So, uh, if I can meet Nikola Tesla, that will be awesome. 